using tested lines of opposing force to find high probability trades. You've seen this one, Shane, right? Yeah, yeah, I've seen okay. this. I mean, after, after, after the last few days of drugs, I really don't remember. So, so here we are. We're in a downtrend. Price is retested. We got double lows down here. We popped out this high. And remember, if you've ever heard me talk about diamonds, and probably most of you haven't, but if you have heard me talk about diamonds, one of the things I say about them is often they're set them and forget them, meaning you have to wait for them to be tested. And now you're talking about upsloping lines and downsloping lines. That's the nature of diamonds, right? And uh, I don't have a drawing for you, but think about this. Diamonds are, if you think of median lines or trend lines as being two-dimensional, diamonds are three or four-dimensional because you can break into the different diamond patterns. So we'll see as we draw them. So it, it's a multi-dimensional trading. So there's more decisions to make. There's different ways to trade. Let's see where this goes. So here's my center line. You got a problem with that, Shane? Nope. Is it working? Good center line. Touch, 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 touch. I'm just looking for frequency. Now I'm not going to lie to you. The back of my mind, I'm going, eh, maybe, okay? But more importantly, it cuts through the action. This is not the same. Well, I'll let, actually, I'll let you speak to this, Shane. This is not the same center line that you were drawing earlier. This cuts right through the action. This cuts, it's the same concept and the same principle, but it's not the same specific use I was using it for. But it's a, right. it's a center line. I'm, yeah, all, all I'm saying is when we get into action and action lines, you'll see in the next session and the next session and the next session, you'll see that more and more style becomes important. There's, there's a little more art involved. If money management is more and more important. Knowing when to trade and when not to trade becomes even more important. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that as these unfold. So let's, just, let's see if we can get one going. That's literally so not, cutting through the center of the swings. Yep, and that's, the, and that's the key here, especially for diamonds, is what's the frequency? Show me the swings, and it's cutting right through it. And you can see, even up here, just take a look. It's swinging beautifully. If I had Ensign up, I'd just, you know, do, do I, but I'm not, I can't draw as well as Shane, but I'd do the parallel tool, and you'd see it just cuts through beautifully. Now I'm looking at this saying, hey, maybe it'll grab this perfectly. All right, let's see what we get. There's my action line. There's my touch. Shane would grab this. This is the bottom of the swing. You could grab this one if you want, but why? Because it cuts through. Might it work? Sure, it might. Take a look. But this one will give you the width. That's why I grabbed it. I measure. This is Dumbo. I just measure, flip it over on top, and I project. I'm not trading. There's nothing to do yet. Okay, I draw on a center line. All I'm doing is cutting through the action. Now, I look at the center line, and the first thing that comes to my mind is, is this interesting? Does it mean anything? Does it have any frequency? The first one wasn't that hard to find, but this one, I've only got the one thing to work with, really, but let's take a look. Okay, how about a sliding parallel? One, two, three, four, nice, nice little touches, cuts through nicely. That's not so bad. How about this side? Okay, that's not so bad either. It's not awful. I'm going to leave that one up. Okay, how about this one? Okay, parallel works nicely. Am I ready to trade? I'm not ready to do anything. I'm still trying to decide, does this make sense? And that's the key. That's why Andrew's quit teaching. If you can imagine trying to do this, on a piece of paper with a pencil and erasing the damn lines, going, oh man, now I gotta redraw all these days in, and I got you know, now I'm gonna move this one over here, and then I gotta redraw these days in. I mean it's a real pain in the you know what. So to do it on a computer is so much easier, which is why it's easier to resurrect this technique. Because we can just drag and drop it so much I mean it's just different. At some point 
they were just beating their head against the wall, and the, plus the paper had holes in it. What I tend to do on my drafting board is I draw on plastic, or what's it called, acetate. And they'll go, yeah, that's the one I like, and then draw it. And I'm very careful to draw lines in because they're really a pain to take out. Actually, Sean draws a lot of my lines, my 11-year-old. My All right, so I say I kind of like this line. I go back and check it out, and I go, hey, this is good validity. I go to this major high. It catches nicely up here. I'm guessing I'm going to measure this. Let's take a look. Yep, sure enough. Measure, flip it over, action line, reaction line. Now I've got lines of opposing force. I've got a downsloping set of lines with an upward projection, and I've got an upsloping line with a set of action reaction lines. I'm not ready to trade. Doesn't matter what time frame, any time frame. In general, well, when I hand draw, just so you know, it's dailies, weeklies, and monthlies, but you can use this on eddies. I probably wouldn't go inside of two forties because it's too much work, but you could do this on any. Um, Carlos, a friend of mine, uh, when I was in Chicago, he's not in Arizona, uh, we had all the currencies, 240s, just laid out, and then we just let them cook. And we'd put out equidistant diamonds. We'd stack them out there for 20, so like six weeks worth. And then you'd trade when they got to the, when they got to test and retest, and you'll see in a minute what we're talking about. All right, so let's look. Price comes up, I like this. Look at it, try and get, it comes up to this downsloping action line. You can see it, test, test, it's probing, test, test. I can't get into the next diamond. Finally, excuse me, finally I'm in the next diamond. Thank you, Jesus. Now it gets in the next diamond. What's it doing? It's probing, it's trying to get into this diamond. And this is what I meant about action lines, action reaction lines or diamonds versus median lines being multidimensional. In median lines, you're just looking, you know, downsloping and parallels. Here, you're thinking about this diamond, this diamond, and this diamond. Where's it going to go? Is it going to go sideways into this diamond? Is it going to break back into this diamond? Is it going to go into this diamond? You've got all kinds of choices to make. So, I don't know where it's going, so I'm going to project the distance to the next one. To make it easy, I'll just do this one equidistant. I could come off of here. If I went back over here and there was a prior load on here, maybe I'd make this non-equidistant. But to keep this one simple, I'm just going to make it equidistant. So now I've got a nice little diamond. I've got my secondary R2 slapped up here. I've still got my center line, which is holding. You can see it being probed. You can see down here, as we came past R1, test, 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 come back, blow through. Now it comes back. It's a beautiful switchback. And I probably should have drawn a multi-pivot line right across here, huh? You could have gotten long here. With diamonds and with action reaction lines, you can trade against downsloping lines. You can trade long against downsloping lines as long as you have money management. You could have gotten long here at the retest with the stop right above here, right, right below here, excuse me. Absolutely. Because it's already broken into the next quadrant. Once it's done its thing to the upside, it's, it's played its card, so to speak. You think I'm crazy, Shane? No, it makes sense. You have a projection and you have quadrants. You have two projections. Yeah. Okay. I'm just checking. I, you know what? I'm getting a clarity check. That's all. All right. Comes up. Look at it. Test. R2 now. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. Let me in. No. Can't come in. Can't come in. Can't come in. Can't. Discards. All, everybody gets short. This line is this is a double line. It's obviously holding. Everybody gets short, pushes it down, and then one person snaps it back. Now it's in the new quadrant. See it trying to get from one diamond to the next diamond? That's how these things trade. It's trying to get into this diamond. It can't. comes back, finds support. Now it's going to try and get up. Well, before it can even get over to this one, it breaks into this diamond. It tries and tries and tries. gets rejected. Now blows into this diamond. Time to add another projection. All right? Here's our new projection. Center line still holding all the way up. Now we come up, we break, we make a high. We're trying to get into this diamond. 
Please let me in. Please let me in. Come on, give me a break. Can't get in. Comes back down. Come on, let me in. Look at it, try and bust the center line. You've got to let me in. I've got to get in. I must get in. Can't get in. Takes out the prior low. Price makes a new high, tests the center line, but then breaks below the prior swing low. Is this a sign of weakness? What do you guys think? It's making new highs. Is it a sign of weakness? You can't be wrong. Go ahead and type. Yes, could be failed. Rebuilding energy, still strong move up. All good answers. All good answers. Let's see what we get. Looks like it's consolidating. All good answers. Comes down. Look at it make the new lows. It wants to make a run. Can't. But it leaves a lower high. Doesn't fill this baseline. And also, look if you look, this is a multi-pivot line right here. Doesn't fill it. Heads back up higher, but leaves a lower high. Looks to me like there are sellers in this market now. But we're still in this quadrant. Comes up. Well, what a surprise. We're at the down sloping R3 closes with great separation. Now, I like that it's tipped this hand. The question is, is it going to blow to this high and this high and get into this quadrant, or is it going to stay into this quadrant? I like the separation. I want to get short at R3, and I get short at R3. My initial stop is just above the next swing high. It's a nothing stop. Profit target. Give me a taste of this reaction line. That's all I want. I don't expect it to go over here. I don't expect it to go down here. Give me this, I'll go away quietly. If it breaks over here, I'm going to get busted. No heat. Notice, don't be a pig. A lot of people will hold out for this. These are dynamic, okay? And I'm trading, I'm short against the downsloping line, which is good. But my profit target is an upsloping line, which means as it moves to the right, my profit target is going to actually move up. Don't be a pig. Don't hold out for this. Take your money. It got to your upsloping line. Take the money and get out. So each time you, you make a new low, you got to run your cursor and go, okay, my profit target's a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And you want to be probably 10 or, I'd say at least 10 ticks inside. Carlos, trade within your stops. Trade within your profit. Same thing here. Because if it gets close enough for jazz, you want your money and you want out because look at how much money you'd be leaving on the table. I don't even know if it goes to the next side, but let's look. Look at it work its way up. It wants to get out. It wants to get over here, but it can't. It's trying, it's trying, it's trying. Could have got long here with nothing stop. I didn't, but you could have. That would have been a great trade. Just A, didn't see it. B, was so happy to just get my money. Probably, should, probably wasn't playing with a full deck, as they say. Stopped at the multi-pivot line? Yes, it did. Take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you're not making big opinions. You're watching the quadrants here. You're I'm not saying, I quadrants. think it's going all the way here. I think it's going all the way up. You're not making big, you're watching the quadrants, right? Yep, I'm just, you know what? I just want to trade the diamond. Especially if these things are wide enough. And these are plenty wide. You know, if, you're, if, you, if you draw them and they're only 20 ticks wide, give yourself a break. But if they're 100 ticks, 150 ticks wide, you got plenty of time to turn the bus around and take your money and get the heck out of the way. So, so you're, you're trading there without big opinions. Yeah, I don't really have a big, yeah. a big opinion. And I'll trade, like I said, I'll trade long against... You know, you, most of you probably never heard me say this before. I'll trade long against a downsloping line if it's in the diamonds. And i got a good stop. If there's a reason to get long, it's broken into the quadrant, and I've got good money management, I'll go ahead and take the trade, sure. 
Absolutely. I don't have an opinion. I'm just trading the diamonds. That's right. Now, there are times where I might have a big-time opinion and diamonds are my best entry, but that's not what this one's about. Maybe we'll talk about that next time. Um, sometimes in some of the longer-term ones I have, um, the only entries are diamonds. They're the best entries of diamonds, I should say. But they just help you trade. They just help you frame trades better. So we're, we could have had a nice little long here. Um, I don't know if we're done or not. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's it. So that is your homework for next time. Practice drawing lines of opposing force with action reaction lines. Make sure you have enough room in between to skedaddle around. And then use quality money management. I will warn you, the closer you trade to the energy points, they are attractants, the, least, the less stable price is. Price will move, but the bars tend to get wider. So I don't like to enter right at the energy point, for example. I will take my profit if it gets there, but I don't really like to trade that much in terms of getting short right at there per myself. I, like, I would much rather trade over here or over here, personally. That's just my own opinion. Okay, so there are no silly questions. Why would you recommend using action react lines as opposed to median lines? Uh, Robert, it's a style question. First of all, action reaction lines for some people are impossible to draw. Some people can't see them, can't draw them, and they just, it's like burning $100 bills. Other people find that they can see frequency better on a center line, and Shane showed you some magnificent steps, one, two, three, to find center lines. If you can find the center lines, the, the action and reaction lines are dumbo easy to find. So some people find them extremely easy, okay? It doesn't matter. You can use either one. Now, the good news about median lines is that when you draw them, the moment you draw them, they're already, they already have a mathematical probability. Action and reaction lines have no mathematical probability until they're tested, period. Dan, got, go. Don't worry about it. DVD, by the way, just so you know, we, we're, we're, we're targeting right at this, the opening of the second week of, of May for them to go out the door. So it won't be very long. Now, when you draw those center lines, you mentioned those are set them and forget them lines. So you might set them and see how they play out over time before you even consider a trade. Yeah, you're looking at one that played out pretty fast. But the majority of, if I'm doing 240s in the currencies, sit there for two to four weeks without a trade. Because, you know what, I like them to go through a couple of these cycles like this before I start to believe in them. And if you stack them out equidistant ten times, you'll be shocked how many trades you get like this. After a while, it's like, you know, plinging ducks at the circus. The little ducks that go around on the, on the mechanical thing. You put structure, just like yeah. I took from the action-reaction course quote there, you put structure around this market and found ways to trade it. Yes. Beautiful. And it will and it'll push itself out in time. You know, you were talking about projecting time. This is mm -hmm. nice because it'll give you projections down sloping and up sloping for time. And you can just lay it out there. And in fact what Carlos and I would do, Carlos is a lawyer by the way, um, Harvard, Oxford, University of Chicago, magnificent mind, knew nothing about trading but was just absolutely fascinated by diamonds, came in, sat down, what he would do is he had his own law practice. And he would come in and just draw from 6.30 to 8.30, and then he'd go to court. And he would say, okay, I don't have, we don't have anything in uh, euro pound for two and a half more weeks. And he'd write it down on himself. We don't have anything in the yen for three days. I mean, it gives you really nice time projections as well, which is, you know, pretty nice. Because if you're here, there's nothing to do. And let's say you're right in right underneath the energy point, especially if these are relatively good distance. If you're right, right underneath the energy point, we don't want to trade anyway, so you want it to move. So you're, you're going to get X amount of bars. You know you've got four to six or eight bars, 240s, you've got at least three days, right? And if you're waiting for it to get to this next test, you can count the bars. It's not that hard. So depending on how, how wide these are, sometimes you get projections that are quite a ways away. Sometimes they're only six or eight bars away, but it gives a beautiful time projections as well. Uh, Scotty B says, God, Scott, you ask the hardest damn questions. Uh, 
And as a reward, by the way, Scotty, if you drop me an email, I will uh, look at the calendar. You and I need to get going. Do you ever draw a fork to help find a center line? Um, yes, uh, sure, absolutely. There are times when I here, you, Scotty B, you've been around me enough to know that you've heard me say before, I can see that darn line, but I can't draw. Where the heck's it at? Hell, I'll do whatever I have to do. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use the each and sticks. I'll call Lucy and Sean if I have to to find the center line. So absolutely, sometimes I'll draw media lines to find the center line. Or, by the way, sometimes I'll draw on a center line and then put in the, sh you know, Shane, Shane, you've seen me do this. Shane does this all the time. And Shane's seen me do this. You put in the center line, you put in the action reaction line, then you'll put the shift in and go, oh, it's a shift. And the reason why you'd like the shift is because it's got a mathematical probability built in. Think about it, folks. If you could trade with the same set of lines, but one of them gives you a mathematical probability, trade with the one with mathematical probabilities every damn time. How about that? Are diamonds more suited to position trading than short-term trading? No, Stephen, if you, this is, um, I don't even remember what this is. This is probably, anybody got a guess? This is Canada. This is Canada, isn't it, Shane? That's what it looks like. like. My brain is mush. I That's think this is Canada. Like. Um, you, you could trade. You could trade this, and you know, make three to five trades a week on this without breathing hard. So you know, or you could position trade it if they were wider, and get three trades a month. It just depends on how you set up the diamonds. On the middle blue up sloping line, would you be looking to go along at the red down line of its quadrant? I don't trade quadrants in diamonds. So let me try it again. On the middle blue up sloping line, would you be looking to go along at the red down line? Do you mean right here? Rita? I wasn't trying to be flip. I'm sorry. I'm just tired. Rita, give me a clarification because I, I, I didn't mean to be flip. I'm sorry. On the inside of the blue line, Probably go up, a, go up a reaction line as it, as it busts through your red line and comes back and retests it. Maybe that's what she's talking about. Are you asking, are, are, am, I, am I looking to get long here, Rita? On the inside of the blue line. Right where my cursor is? I got a question. Okay, go up one more line from there. Yeah, as we bust up through yeah. the red line, you willing to buy the retest of the red line as it comes back down? Right here? On the, on, yeah, on the right side of the quadrant. It busts oh, up here. through. Yeah, right there. You're willing yeah. oh, to buy this that? One I'm, oh, this one yeah. I'm definitely buying with a stop right here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, in fact, if I didn't say that, I should have said that. Yeah, this is a no-brainer to me. And this okay. is one where, like I said, you're not, you're not going to hear me talk about this in basics. And, and in the midday sessions, I'm not going to talk about it much. So if I ignore you and you ask that question, it's because I don't want to talk about it outside of these seminars, but um, I'll trade against down something. I'll buy this one with a stop under here every time. Sure, absolutely. Because it's in the next quadrant. It's already, look, it's already taken out the highs. It's all mapped out ready to rock. Reed, I still feel like I'm cheating you. She said that's what she meant. Oh, okay. Fine. Once the diamonds are tested, what are the probabilities? I can't give you, I could lie to you, Rebecca, but I'm not like that. Um, I can tell you that, I can eyeball it and tell you that um, median lines are 80%, they're going to go to the next line. I think diamonds are probably in the high 60s, something like that. But remember, the difference is, in general, your profit target is almost always eroding away from you. And that's what you have to keep in the back of your mind. You need two things. You need quality money management because a lot of times you are going to take this trade against a down sloping line, so you've got to have a tight stop. You also have to have a reason to get long, which is it took out these highs. It's busted into this nicely. So you've got to have a good, good money management. And B, once you get in, you have to remember you're not going for this line. This line, unless, unless you get here, but really you're going for this blue line which is upsloping, so it's really eroding away from you. It's coming right at you. It's like a train moving toward you. So as soon as you get tagged, get out of the way. Take your money and run. Whatever's left is run. 
And the faster it gets there, the more money you're going to get. Okay? It's kind of the opposite of median lines because with median lines, you're generally trading with the trend. A lot of times here in Diamonds, you're trading anti-trend because it's running and it's going to try and test and break into this one. Remember here, it's going to try and go here, here, or here, or maybe even here. So there's a lot of possibilities. But the one you have to worry about is this one because it's going to creep up on you. Can you add measured moves? You can. i got to tell you, though, when I trade with diamonds, I try, to, I try and keep them as simple as possible because, remember, this is an easy one, but when we get to the next one three months ago, three months from now, you're going to see one that's got, like, ten of these stacked out there. We're going to be trading on the tenth one, and your eyes are going to be crossed because it's going to be, like, five wide on one side and ten across. And, you know, so doing the ABCs and stuff, you're just going to get confused. You basically, I just like to just go and just trade within the diamond and don't worry about it. You start to dilute it, I think. And, yeah. you know, you're seeing your mind gets biased to other things. I think you dilute the pure concept of it if you start adding things like that. It's got to be it's Canada. Do you ever combine media lines with diamonds? Um, I, believe, I believe so, Scotty, yes. But, you know, I, I, as I said, I was doing green tea and peyote at the time. I, I was, I, you guys probably don't know this, I was, I was not feeling very well early in the week. Everybody in the family has a cold hit me particularly hard, and I was doing lots of uh, these lung drugs that give you all these bad reactions, but I'm much better now. And the, the reason why I was so stacked up with drugs is because Shane said to me, I'm going to do this myself. I said, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'll be fine by Saturday, and I'm okay today. My wife's sleeping it off, but I'm okay. So anyway, uh, do I ever go buy immediate lines with diamonds? Yes, Arizona in general is much better for me, Scotty, yes. This is the first cold I've, or anything I've had. Um, I don't do much work with media lines. I, in, with diamonds, I, I'm I'm with Shane. It's it, it's really a clear cut tool once you learn it. Um, and it, there's so much else going on. I tend to just leave it clean. Are you able to draw a forecast chart like Marichal's? <laughs> well, Rahul, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. Thank you. Thank you to me. Um, I do not use sliding parallels with diamonds. No, I don't, Steve. Um, I own now. A little over, well, the count's still going on, but a little over 1,100 charts of mirror shells. They're going to end up at the Milton Friedman Institute, which is the new business library at the business school library at the University of Chicago, which I think opens in I don't know, two and a half years or so. Um, we're still in a copyright fight because, well, because. But uh, the moment that's done we will do two things. These charts will be made available, and B, they will go up at the business school. That's going to be their artwork for their big, uh, their biggest hall. Char and, and when I die, <laughs> I told them they couldn't put it up until I die. They're actually going to put some of my hand-drawn charts up as well, which I don't want it up until I'm gone because, to be honest, I'll be embarrassed. There, I've never seen anybody draw like Marichelle, ever, even close. And I've seen some magnificent charts in my life. And, Shane, by the way, Shane doesn't suck. I'm a pretty good chartist, but let me just let me just tell you, the stuff Marichelle draws is just incredible. And when you see, when I'm finally able to pop that chart up so you can see what's behind that 15-year projection. By the way, Shane, nice job, and you'll be shocked when you see what I can't even show you. I, I promised the judge that I wouldn't cheat, but um, you're you're on the trail on the trail, my friend. I've but, been picking uh, anyway. it apart for years. <laughs> well, would either you or Shane consider making your slides available to us? You have the DVD. You don't need the slides. Think. <laughs> what do you want the slides for? <laughs> what is the time frame and date so we can practice? Phil, I'll post it for you, okay? I'll send an email. I'll, I'll thank you out to all of you, and I'll give you exactly what the dates are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How about that? Um, and also, if you want the data, some of you may not have the data. Uh, we'll put the data up as well, and you can grab the data. Um, we're not going to go much longer because um, I promised my kids, I'd, actually I promised Sean I'd go outside and try to play catch for a little bit. But I give more ideas to draw, identify center lines, or has Shane covered it exhaustively. That's all we're going to do today, Krishna. We're dead. We're done drawing. Lots of great information. What a day. The history is awesome. Shane, excellent presentation. I absolutely concur with that, guys. Um, if you have questions about the basic DVDs, uh, either email me or put them on the forum 
and we're trying to be active on the forum. It'll be a reason for us to actually be active on the forum. How's that? Yeah, we're, 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 we're trying to be more proactive on the forum, so. And I have a, I have a new, uh, I have a new toy to deconstruct and pick apart here with these diamonds. Thank you. Good. Um, uh, wait, hang on. There's thinking about Carrie. Uh, Michael, if you email me, I will find. If you email, if you, if somebody remembers to email me, I will find the link for Carrie and put it up there for the 25% off. Actually, because I have it because I on my brand new machine. I actually, I was going to actually do chart overlay today, and I went to pop it up during one of the breaks, and my. My, my trial versions run out. I'm so embarrassed. So I do have the link. I just forgot to pop it in before the day. I'm sorry. So if you if you uh, somebody drop me an email to remind me, I will post it on the front page. Believe me, Carrie would love for people to do it. You know, and it costs almost nothing anyway. And on top of that, you get a version that nobody else gets with all the nice shifts and everything else on it. So does Shane have a long term? line and price projection for the Dow. No, I think Shane and I have taken the pledge never to make any projections <laughs> or predictions, haven't we? Are we out of that business now? We are. You know, look at the last balance line. If it breaks to the downside, just start thinking about the lessons. <laughs> and you can put me on record as saying I said nothing. We did a comparison of 29 and current, mm -hmm. so take a good you look a, and ways to trade wonderful. It. Yes, you did a wonderful. You know, and I was so... I'm going to tell you a, quick, a real quick story, guys. We were trying to say what we were going to do, and we were, we were banding about, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm thinking about doing this. And I'm thinking they're going, you know, with Shane's first seminar, let me think what he's, let me, let me not step on his toes. And I was, I was eyeing up um, the Aussie, of course, he ended up doing the Aussie. And then I actually was going to do the 240 Aussie, and honest to God, I was tired, and instead I ended up doing the Euro. And in the morning when I got up, I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm stepping on Shane's toes. I'm doing the Aussie. And then I realized I was charting the Euro. And I went, oh, good. That works. Then when I talked to Shane, we were talking about what are you going to do next? I was going to do 1929 versus the current Dow. And I said, Shane, what are you going to do? He goes, I have got the coolest thing, 1929 versus the current Dow. And I was like, you son of a. <laughs> but you did a great job. I don't think I could have done that good a job. I, I really loved it. I, was, I sat back and. I'll tell you what, I, I popped about six Diet Cokes. I know I'm on green tea, but when I really get going, sometimes I pop some Diet Cokes. And I had a great time. I thought it was just wonderful. No, you know, Scotty B says, give us your version the next time. Actually, you know what I'm going to do for the next time for you, Scotty B? Shane actually gave you, ready for this? He gave you um, a preview of what I'm going to do. You threw that in on purpose, didn't you, Shane? No, no. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um... In 1987. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did throw that in on purpose. <laughs> yeah, a little. A little. In 1987, I was actually the lead. I had a position on, and then I got a call from the Fed, and then I was the lead intervener in the S&P market. So I had to get, cover my position and then intervene for the Fed for two and a half days. So I will go through that on an intraday chart and show you where I got short, why I got short, what I harvested out of it, did I go long? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was I was so I was so angry that I had to get out of my long the rule was you were not allowed to trade what you were doing the intervention for, so I had to actually get out. There's no way I was going long. Let me just tell you, I couldn't sell my my fills I was selling for the Fed and my fills were coming in better than where I was trying to sell. There was no way I was going long. Anyway. Uh, I don't know what the heck just happened to my screen. You're still good here. Mine's all screwed up. I had this real big... Oh, it's Scotty B. It screwed me up, of course. Never mind. Um, long-term commodity data. I have e-signal, but they only have long-term data on stocks. James, if you can, if you can have a little patience... Just a little patience, and I'm talking about six to eight weeks. I have, oh, probably 50 DVDs worth of long-term data um, in ASCII. 
and we will try and get it up on the premium section because we can't do it in the public section, we go to jail, but you get the idea. Got an audience question to my box about 80. I don't know what that means to me, but okay. Are we having mentoring this week? Um, David, there will be mentoring. I have to look at the calendar and see where you fall. I will, I will get a hold of everybody that's in mentoring um, and tell you whether or not this is your week or not. To be honest with you, I'm so brain dead right now, I'll have to pull up the calendar and see whether this is your week or not. If it's not, because it's every other week, so. If it's your week, you're in. Um, somebody says that they would like to trade, study trading commodities more in depth. Uh, Shane and I are actually going to do at least once a month, if not twice a month, at, in the evening. Kind of two old guys sitting around at a pub drinking. We may get joined by somebody else. We'll see if they can work out their uh, drinking habits so that they can drink with us. And uh, we'll talk about long-term position trading and uh, specifically about commodities because Shane has pledged that he's going to become a commodities trader. Well, Karen, you're moving to Arizona, aren't you? Oh. Well, I'm not coming to Colorado. So, okay, well, you can visit often. That's fine. The night beer drinking will be online. Yes, it will. You'll be able, it'll be in GoToWebinar, and then also we'll put it up as a podcast. So, now, it probably is not going to come until July because I have to, just so you guys know, and I'll type this in, it'll be the first to know, June 7 through June 16, I will be at the University of Chicago Hospital, so there's nothing wrong with me. I just have to get my whatever checkup. They're going to take me apart and put me back together. So put that on your calendar. It doesn't mean there won't be sessions. Shane will take care of me, and then when Shane goes on vacation, I'll take care of him. But there you go. I've washed and rinsed your brain. <laughs> and just a reminder to everybody to uh, a whole lot of practice to see where some of this that you can use will fit in with you. Um, a whole lot of practice with these techniques. And you know what? As you practice, you know, maybe uh, one of us gave you a stepping stone into a greater understanding and as you practice you'll start to see that so don't jump out next week and start trading these things a whole lot of practice and you'll find something that suits you fits you that you understand a little bit better so a lot of practice this is advanced and so just make sure you're not jumping straight in and blowing any legs off again I have watched people drop 10 million dollars on a trade okay please do us a favor. There's a reason this is called an advanced seminar. Take your time, relax, learn this method out. There's always another trade. Hell, that one trade we did on the euro, how many trades did we make? Oh, <laughs> yeah, plenty. You know, I mean, and you know what? An understanding of these center lines will help you with your median line trading. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please don't, please don't, don't trade until you're ready to trade. Just Slow down and relax. Anyway, it's approaching 4 o'clock, my time, which means it's time for Shane to go to bed because he probably was up until 4 o'clock. <laughs> the market geometry site, um, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I, I never answer that question. But keep your eyes peeled. That's all I have to say. Um, you guys have a great, wonderful weekend. I'm going to go see what my kids are doing. I think my, my guess is that I'm about to go play catch. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. We waited a long time to do this. Carlos is going to work his fanny off now. And I guarantee you the DVD will just be absolutely awesome. We'll see you all on Monday at the free session. Um, anybody that's in mentoring that is due, I will get a hold of them. If you're not ready, don't, don't be afraid to say to me, hey, I need a few days after this. You blew my brain up. That's fine. Take your time. Please learn these tools. Shane, I can't tell you what a wonderful job you did. It's just, I'm just magnificent. Oh, and thank you. And I appreciate the warm acceptance from everybody. Appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful weekend. 
Um, Tim Morris at Shady Blanket Ship. This is our first event seminar, but it's not going to be our last. We'll see you on Monday at the free uh, midday seminar. Go out and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Spring's here. Let's have fun, guys. Take care. Everybody rest.